every great drama has its subplots. Game five of the NBA Finals was no exception. The Jazz finally got a marquee performance from their star, Karl Malone. The mailman stole the show with 39 points. Meanwhile, Chicago's leading man, Michael Jordan, was having trouble hitting his marks. Even with Malone's big night, the director of Utah's cast, Jerry Sloan, made a script revision at intermission. He called on a seldom used veteran from Wichita State, a stand-in, Antoine Carr. Carr had five field goal attempts in the second half. He made them all. Without his performance in a supporting role, the NBA Finals would be history. Instead, the Jazz are back in Utah, back on their home stage, after refusing to let the curtain come down in Chicago. Game six, next. Game six. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. As we mentioned earlier, no team has ever come back from a 3-1 deficit to win the NBA Finals. That's what the Jazz are facing. But for the sake of context, six teams have recovered after being down 3-1 to win earlier rounds in the NBA playoffs, including three teams that eventually won the championship. And should the Jazz win tonight and force a game seven, then it would be worth noting that very few teams have ever won a seventh game on the road in the finals. That's what Chicago would be facing. If anything, Utah would have a slight edge, it would seem, in that scenario. Now, if Chicago wants to take some encouragement from recent history, they know that game six has been very, very good to them. Of their five championships, only one, the first one, a five-game victory over the Lakers, was not clinched in the sixth game. There was the comeback from 15 points down in the fourth quarter against Portland in 92. John Paxson shot at Phoenix a year later. The Sonics were finished off in game six two years ago in Chicago, and then it was Steve Kerr's shot that finally put Utah away last spring. So, if the Bulls want to bring the hammer down, game six is the time to do it as we welcome in Isaiah Thomas and Doug Collins. There is a game six, Doug, because Utah was able to make some subtle adjustments in game five. Well, Bob, they went away from their screen roll in the second half, and they went more to a post-up with Carl Malone. They put Antoine Carr in the game to give them another shooter so that when Pippen double teamed, they could kick the ball out to the open man. They're going to get the good baseline cut. Pippen's going to get a double team, and you're going to see Carr step right in out of the double team and hit the open jump shot. This caused problems for Chicago in the fourth quarter. Now what happens is you worry about the four shooters you have on the floor so you stay at home. This gives Malone room to operate in the post and go one on one against Rodman. He does, wheels in and scores easily. Now in the fourth quarter, it was Antoine Carl, Carr and Carl Malone. They had 16 of the 24 points. They're gonna need more of that today if they're gonna force a game seven. Bob? Well, you know, Doug, we might ask the question, what took Jerry Sloan so long to go to Antoine Carr? Prior to game five, he'd scored only four points through the first four games. Well, in talking to Jerry Sloan, one of the things he's worried about is Carl Malone guarding Tony Kukoc on the perimeter. And when he has Antoine Carr in the game, that has to occur. So even though he doesn't like that matchup, we're going to have to see a lot of it today if the Utah Jazz are going to win. Well, Tony Kukoc was brilliant in game five. 11 of 13, four three-pointers, 30 points. But Jordan and Pippen had their problems. Surprisingly, Bob, Jordan and Pippen struggling all night long. You see Jordan here never really could find his rhythm. Every time he shot the ball, it was just a little long. Pippen, known for his moves against Hornacek in the low post, never really went to his patented jump hook. Forced turnaround jump shots all night. But Kukoc was marvelous hitting 11 of 13 from the field, and you see the big three right there over Carl Malone. Now it took Kukoc 11 field goals. Kukoc made 11 field goals on 42, on, on 13 shots. Pippen and Jordan took 42 field goals to combine for 11 field goal attempts. I think for the big three, they're gonna have to play well tonight, and all of them gonna have to big effort here, Bob. Hard to beat the beauty of the area surrounding Salt Lake City and the Delta Center. Inside, they've already begun the chant of Beat the Bulls. And to get a look at the starting lineups, we go to the PA man at the Delta Center, Dan Roberts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Delta Center for game number six of the NBA Finals. With the Chicago Bulls and our Utah Jazz. And now introducing the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. 
Wearing number seven, starting forward at 6'11 from Croatia, Tony Kukoc. Wearing number 33, starting forward at 6'7 from Central Arkansas, Scotty Pippen. Wearing number 13, the starting center at seven feet from New Mexico, Luke Longley. On the guard line, number nine, at 6'6 from Miami of Ohio, Ron Harper. And at guard, number 23, at 6'6 from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. The Bulls are coached by Phil Jackson. Ever Midwest Division title. Unbelievable. Magic down the alley. Goes to three. Black bait. Picks up on Magic. Black bait. Oh, baby. Big mark everywhere. He did it. He did it. A new NBA assist king. God's got Congratulations, Paul Malone. 1996-97 NBA Most Valuable Player. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing our Utah Jazz. Starting at forward number 32 at 6'9 from Louisiana Tech, the mailman, Kyle Malone. Starting forward number three at 6'7 from Long Beach State, Brian, Brian Russell. The starting center number 31 at 6'9 from Stanford, Adam Key. On the guard line, number 12 at 6-1 from Gonzaga, John Stockton. And guard number 14 at 6-4 from Iowa State, Jeff Hornacek. The Jazz are coached by Jerry Sloan. And as always, pre-tip, we go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Bob. The big news on the Bulls is the condition of Scottie Pippen. As was reported earlier in our pregame show, he did take an injection yesterday. He told me he hurt that back in game three and game four, irritated a little bit more. Before the game today, he said he had everything he could have done, done to it. He had electrical stimulation, then he iced it, had ultrasound, had a massage, and then did a lot of stretching and told me that he is a little bit ginger, but nothing could keep him out of a game like this. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. One further Bulls note, I just spoke to Ron Harper. He is suffering the effects of the flu. He's very weak. He can't hold any food down. He will start. He will play. Just how long and how effective, he doesn't know. As for Howard Isley, I spoke to him. He's still suffering from vertigo. He's told me before the game he's a little busy. He's a little disoriented. He is going to play. Coach Sloan is just going to keep his eye on him. If he cannot go, John Stockton will take his minutes. Finally, I spoke to Carl Malone. Carl Malone told me he's going to the basket early tonight. He's going to be very aggressive early in the game. He wants to get Longley and Rodman into foul trouble. Not many outside shots at all. He finally went on to say, we're down 3-2. I know this sounds crazy. However, I like our position, and I'm confident we can win this series. Bob? Jim, thanks a lot. The officials are Dick Pavetta and Hugh Hollins who worked game three, each of them, in Chicago, and Danny Crawford, who worked game two of the finals here at the Delta Center. The Bulls are just four and four on the road in the playoffs, and in fact have lost four of their last five road games against their toughest opponents, the Pacers and the Jazz. Jordan guarded by Russell. Hornacek will open on Pippen. They'll try and post Scotty on him. They go to it right away. Stockton comes over on the double team. Now back to Scotty, and they couldn't recover. Hornacek was left alone with him, and an easy two for Scotty. That's going to be the strategy here early. Try to go at Hornacek with Pippen. Michael will do a lot of the ball handling in the first period. Malone against Longley. Has to give it up, and Jordan is the only guy there. Longley, who has contributed little offensively. 
and has been abused defensively by Malone. It's Jordan missing his first shot, and Russell takes the rebound. It looks like Scottie Pippen is laboring as he moves up and down the court. Ahmad Tolji is suffering from a bad back. Malone gets his first. 17 of 27 in game five, as the whole Utah team shot better than 50%. Hooked away, Malone chases it to the side. It'll belong to Chicago. Bob, I think Scotty Pippen pulled his back out on that dunk shot on his first play when he went up for the rim and he pulled it down. I think he stretched up and he grimaced as he came down and he could barely run. Harper guarded by Stockton. Pippen against Hornacek. Draws the double. Harper's the guy they'd like to leave alone. Kukoc isn't. But this time he misfires. Hornacek lost it to Longley. Now Pippen has it. All along Kukoc. The one thing you don't want to do if you're Utah is get into a quick turnover battle here and give them easy points, especially Kukoc. Remember, he loves to get off early in quarters, and then he's a load the rest of the game. Hornacek from Stockton ties the game at four. That was a great screen by Carl Malone. Hornacek set Michael Jordan up beautifully and in a great entry pass by Stockton. Who coach? You wonder if the Bulls went to Kukoc enough in game five. With Jordan and Pippen struggling, Kukoc was on fire but got only 13 shots. Yeah, Kukoc has the size advantage and also the speed advantage over Adam Keefe, and he can take him inside. Also, he can stick the outside Jay. Malone got inside of Longley and drew the foul. Now you watch Pippen come across the lane, and as he reaches up to dunk, he pulls his back out, and you see him grimace as he comes up the floor. Let's keep our eye on Scottie Pippen tonight. Let's check in with Ahmad. Bob, Scottie Pippen's really having a bad problem. In trying to bring the ball down, you can notice Michael sending him down the floor so he can bring the ball up. Now, as we mentioned earlier, that the strategy was to go to Scottie in the post. If his back continues to bother him, they may have to change that strategy. Bob? You can see him with his hands on his knees, bending over, trying to limber up wincing quite a bit. Malone hits the first. Generally, he and the Jazz team have not gone to the free throw line in the finals as often as they did during the regular season and in the earlier playoff rounds. The Bulls have had a big edge at the free throw line. Jim Gray is listening to Jerry Sloan over on the sideline. He says Jerry is already complaining about illegal defense early in the game. Let's see if the next time down the floor the referees hear him once again. And that was something that was big in the United Center. He was able to get the referee's attention. I thought it helped his team. Harper trying to back in on Stockton, and the whistle goes against Utah. It's Stockton's first. See, what Chicago will try to do is put a lot of pressure inside on the post with Harper and Pippen posting up Stockton and Hornacek. Harper really battling with Stockton. Now he's got it. Tried to bring it back out and Keith stole it. Hornacek loses it to Harper. And a whistle as Harper comes stampeding into the lane. Now Bob, Scotty Pippen came back and got that steal, but he is really struggling right now. You're going to see him come in from behind, and after he knocks this ball away, he really sort of stands, and I watched him the whole way. He looked over at the bench at Phil Jackson, like saying, I, I don't feel very good right now. He's standing up straight. That's the first sign of a back injury when a guy stops bending his knees. A back injury is one of the most crippling of injuries, especially in an athletic context. And I'm not trying to compare a physical injury to an illness, but it was here in this building where Michael Jordan, sick as a dog, managed to gut it out in game five of last year's final, the pivotal game. Scottie Pippen is probably mindful of that and will give it everything he's got to try to equal 
the effort that his teammate Michael Jordan has shown in the past. See, Bob, that's why I think it's very, very important for the Jazz to lock in on Tony Kukoc because if Pippen can't score and it's only Michael Jordan, that will be to their advantage. They've got to do a job on Kukoc today. Stockton drives on Harper, ties the game. Stockton didn't take a single shot in the fourth quarter of game five. His assist totals have generally been high. His shooting percentage is high, but they'd like to see him get a few more shots up toward the rim. Three second violation against Chicago. So you watch Stockton's aggressiveness. They've given him the baseline this whole series. This time he's able to take Harper to the baseline, get a little space and finish on the right side of the basket. Hornacek, Jordan up on him. Malone puts it on the floor and is fouled. It was before the shot. It's Longley's second. Well, this was the strategy of Carl Malone. He said, I'm going to put the pressure on the Bulls defense. Not many jump shots. And he has done that. Two quick fouls on Longley. Hornacek is free, but can't hit. Hornacek is now 18 for 46 in the series. Jordan, there's his first field goal. And the Bulls take a 10-8 lead. If you take away Hornacek's 7 of 11 in game three, he's shooting around 30% for the rest of the series. 7 of 11 in game two, I should say, here. Harper reached in and fouled. Rodman off the bench. Let's see who he replaces. Longley has two fouls. And it's Luke who'll go out. Russell for three. Utah has not been hitting the threes in this series. Now 11 for 51, around 20%. They shot 37% as a team from beyond the arc for the season. Hippen with the hook. Chicago by four. Malone screening for Stockton. His three isn't there. Hippen claims the rebound. Hippen had it knocked away. Hornacek got a hand on it. Stockton takes it, dishes it to Jeff, who misses the driving one-hander. Jordan is wrapped up by Keefe for the Utah foul. You know, Pippen is really hurting, but he's playing in pain. As he takes Adam Keefe into the middle and shoots his patented little jump hook. And as he falls to the floor, you can see it's very difficult for him to get up with that bad back. You see him running up the floor, not able to get the type of push and the speed that he normally would have. I'm having a shot back at the Delta Center, and during that timeout, I just spoke with Chip Schaefer, the trainer for the Chicago Bulls. He said that Scottie Pippen is not sore or he is just sore, and he's having a problem really with his mobility, not able to bend over and grab the ball, but hopefully as he plays further and gets more warmed up, it'll improve. That's what they're hoping. Bob? Ahmad, thanks. With Scottie struggling, I think you're going to see the Jazz start picking up a little bit further down the floor. He's usually their primary ball handler. They'll try to pressure Michael and Harper up the floor, make it tougher for them to get into their offense. Here is Pippen, out to Harper, open three, missed it. Malone battling Rodman, and it's tipped to Stockton. Utah on the run, but Stockton circles back outside to set it up. It was kicked, Utah keeps it, fresh 24. You watch Malone and Rodman battling under the board. Malone's going all out as he runs the floor. They both kick each other a little bit. The referees may clean that up. 
Russell couldn't finish. Kukoc rebounds. That's two layups now that the Jazz have missed here early in this first quarter. Hornacek and now Russell. See, with Pippen hurting, I think Harper's going to have to step up big and supply the scoring load. Jordan for three. Got it. Jordan with five. And Chicago with a seven-point lead. Malone on that left block, this time against Rodman. Takes him into the lane. Tries to muscle up, but loses it. Pippen back. It was tied at eight. Now Chicago's on a 7-0 run. Who coach? Underneath to an unguarded Harper, and the Bulls have scored nine unanswered points. Timeout, Utah. So you watch Carl Malone in the low post. They're not double teaming him. They're letting Rodman play him one on one. Consequently, when he goes up to put up the, the shot, he gets stripped, and it leads to this. Cool coach on the drive, the easy dump to Harper. Harper's going to have to step up big inside for the layup. And you're watching the NBA on NBC. The Bulls lead by nine, but here's the bad news for them. Moments ago, Scottie Pippen, accompanied by trainer Chip Schaefer, leaves the bench and heads for the locker room. With more, here's Ahmad. All right, Bob, I just spoke with Chip, and he told me that Scottie asked out of the game, and he wants to go back in the locker room and try to stretch his back out and try to get it more loose before he tries to come back in. I'll keep uh, an eye on it, and I'll keep you posted. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Ahmad. Well, during that timeout, Jerry Sloan was about as loud and angry as he has been at his team this entire series. He said, guys, you are standing around. You're not fighting for any position defensively. You're letting the Bulls go wherever they want to go. Quit running around screen. Start running through them. Take a hard foul. Get some fight in you. Bob? Jim, thanks. He goes to his bench. Isley is in. And so, too, is Antoine Carr. Carr tries to make a move on Kukoc. And there's a foul on Kukoc, his first. Now, Bob, the reason Carr's in the game is because Utah was playing four on five offensively. With Adam Keefe in the game, Scottie Pippen wasn't going to guard him. Now you've got Kukoc who's going to have to play Antoine Carr. So now it's a five on five matchup. They've got to take advantage of this with Isley uh, in now for Stockton. Harper right now is on Malone. An illegal defense is called against Chicago. Look, I think they should have started Antoine Carr. That center position is a revolving door for them with Oster Tag and Foster, and it was important for them to get off to a good start. Now they've buried themselves and find themselves in a big hole. Oster Tag and Foster have given them nothing in this series. Good pass from Malone inside the Hornacek, who converts it. That's why their lack of scoring at center is why they were interested in Ronnie Sykley and tried to get him from Orlando in a trade that eventually was voided. Jordan over Russell. Rebound to Carr, who immediately makes his presence felt. Michael Jordan's illegal now, so the Bulls are all running around. And it's their second illegal defense, which will result in a technical foul shot being taken. And Jerry Sloan just got a technical. Phil Johnson comes over and settles him down a little bit. Jerry's got to maintain his composure right now. He just got the illegal defensive call for a technical. And then he follows it up with a technical of his own. If he was arguing for the illegal defense, that's a cruel irony for him because he got the call. But now the technicals may cancel each other out. It's Jordan to shoot it first. We're told by Jim Gray from the Utah bench that the reason Sloan got his technical was arguing about this. When he was knocked down by Kukoc, there was no foul called, and that's what had Jerry hot. Remember, that's the same thing that uh, he did against Longley to bait him into his fifth foul in here in game two. So I don't think the referees went for that today. I think that was a good no call. Hornacek, an 89% free throw shooter, swishes it at the other end. Bulls with the ball. 
Down by seven. Scott Burrell is on Russell. Rodman on Malone. And Rodman's going to be hit with a foul, I think. It is on Dennis, his first. Folks, you can log on to msnbcsports.com as NBA Showtime extends its coverage to the Internet. Check out Bill Walton's game previews, plus click on in-depth video features from NBC Sports. And you can chat with Bill Walton tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific at msnbcsports.com. That's a look at today's page. Malone missed the first. But not the second. To give you an idea how close this series has been, other than the Game 3 blowout, the nine-point lead the Bulls enjoyed a short while ago was the biggest lead for either team in any game, other than Game 3, of course. Kukoc misses, and Isley rebounds. Far against Kukoc. Jumper over him. Is good. So they've got to go to that matchup. There's no way Tony Kukoc can play him. He's too powerful down there. And Chicago wants to talk it over. Their nine-point lead has been cut to four with 2.58 to play in the first. Antoine Carr is a much-needed force here. They've got to have five guys on the floor that can shoot the basketball to keep Chicago honest on defense. Antoine Carr with the little bang, he gets the space and makes the open jump shot. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Why you need Antoine Carr? You're going to see they're going to stay mostly at home on the perimeter against these players. All he has to do is take his time. Kukoc is not going to block his shot, bump him a little bit and use his power down there. Now, the one thing he has to be concerned about is Kukoc loves to play defense from behind, so he can't be careless with the ball where Tony can come from behind him, Bob, and slap that thing away. Meanwhile, we played nine minutes. Carl Malone has attempted only one shot, which he made. But he's put the pressure on the defense. He's gone to the basket, and what he's done, he's got them in the penalty here early by drawing a lot of fouls on Longley and Rodman. That will take its toll as the game goes on, Bob. The seldom used Bill Wennington is in, along with Scott Burrell and Steve Kerr. Rodman and Jordan complete the five on the floor for Phil Jackson right now. Michael dishes out to Burrell. And Russell reaches in and knocks it away with three on the shot clock. When Michael gives that ball up, you've got to really work hard and not let him catch it back, and that's what he did that time, Russell. Excellent D. Got to shoot it quickly. Jordan Will with a hand in his face. Burrell skies for the rebound. Loops to the side, and eventually it's Utah who has it. Here's Hornacek. A pull-up three. It's hard to imagine Utah winning the next two games and taking the title unless Hornacek hits shots like that, which outside of game two in this series, he hasn't been doing. Shot clock violation. Michael gave it up. They weren't even close to hosting a shot before 24 seconds. Terrific team defense. But Isaiah, the play before, Brian Russell went down on the floor, knocked the loose ball away, and Hornacek got the three. Those are the hustle plays that this crowd creates from this team, and they're going to need all of those today. And, and this is the second time in this series where you've seen Michael Jordan lose track of the shot clock, which is very uncharacteristic for him. Isley, who's quicker than Kerr, is guarded by Steve as he comes out of the backcourt. It's Malone. And it's Utah with the lead. Only moments ago, they trailed by nine. Carr came in, Isley giving them good minutes. That's been the difference.
Gordon. Rodman on the offensive glass. Wennington a good look. Wennington will hit the open jumper. Offensive rebounds were such a key here. When the Bulls won game two, they did not shoot well, but they got off 18 offensive rebounds. Moving down toward a minute to play in the first. Chicago by one. And a whistle from Dick Pavetta. Another illegal defense. That's on Michael Jordan. He got two zones below his man. Hornacek stayed out behind the three-point line. Michael dropped down two areas, and he was spotted. Now, it helps that Jerry Sloan is sitting there in the referee's ear helping him see Michael Jordan. Hornacek hits the technical. Watch the byplay here between Malone and Rodman. A sign of respect, actually, it appeared to me. You're it. <laughs> Chris Morris comes off the bench, making his first appearance for Utah. Antoine Carr gets a breather. There have been three illegal defense calls in this first quarter against Chicago. Now, Bob, Antoine Carr is not a guy who plays heavy minutes. So I think what Jerry Sloan's going to try to do is maybe give him five or six minutes here or there to try to keep him as fresh as possible. Kukoc comes in as soon as Carr goes out. Kukoc having trouble covering Carr defensively earlier in the game. Isley bounces to Malone. Tough shot, but he cans it. Jordan over Russell. Tied at 22 with half a minute to play in the period. Alone against Wennington. Off balance, hit it, plus the foul. See, Bob, that's what I'm talking about, being aggressive, Isaiah. Taking the ball to the basket. Isley with the give and go. He doesn't settle for the jump shot. He puts the pressure on the defense, and it's a tough shot. And the same thing, he sees Winnington on him. He says, no way I can get this shot. He bodies up. Now an opportunity for a three-point play, which would give his team a three-point lead. And the weak spot for the Chicago Bulls is when you get past Lonely and Rodman, they have nothing behind them. Winnington can't hold Malone, and that's where they miss the big guys in terms of Caffey and O'Brien Williams. And Malone is smart to get into their bench now. A dozen for Malone in the first quarter. A perfect four of four from the field. Almost as important, Hornacek has contributed nine. They need him. Who coach? They had a foul to give. It looked like he traveled, but just before that, the whistle blew for the foul. Now, Chris Morris slapped him from behind, so he took the good foul. Bulls left to inbound the ball with 8.4 seconds to go, and Greg Foster's going to come into the game. Now, Bob DeRees, he's in right now, and you give him a rest here at the end of the quarter, the last 8.4 seconds, and then the time during the, the break. Jordan. Double team, forces up the quarter's final shot and misses it. A better start for Carl than for Michael. Once down by nine, Utah leads after one by three. And you're watching the NBA on NBC. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center and early on Scottie Pippen re-injured his back on that dunk shot that he had just the beginning of the game. He has been in the locker room for the past five or six minutes trying to stretch that back out. He has both doctors in there. They're just trying to see what they can do to get him ready to play. And if anything else happens, I will be here to report it to you. Bob? 
Ahmad, thanks a lot. Guys, as we begin the second quarter with Utah up by three, something significant. They were able to make a run and turn this game around a bit with Howard Isley on the floor rather than John Stockton. And Isley did not play well for them in Chicago, so much so that Jerry Sloan barely used him with the game in doubt on Friday night. Well, they went on a 17-5 run with Stockton sitting down, but also a key, they brought Antoine Carr in for Keith. So they got another offensive player in there, Bob. That was real critical for them. As Jim Gray reported before the game, Isley has been suffering from vertigo. Apparently not dizzied by the heights of game six tonight. Shandon Anderson with a nice move. Every time Anderson comes in, they immediately go in the post against either Burrell or Bushler. Jordan opens the second quarter on the bench, which is usually the way Phil Jackson plays it. Whistle away from the ball from Hugh Hollins. Again, uh, Isaiah, Shandon Anderson in the post, and he just backs Scott Burrell down. Nobody helps him out. And that's a big weapon for them coming off the bench. And Doug, the danger is when you don't finish your job at home, Scotty Pippen comes on the road, he gets hurt. I remember when we were in the finals playing against the Los Angeles Lakers, and I got injured in the game six, sprained my ankle, turned the whole series around, and that's what may happen here. Anderson picked up the foul a moment ago, and then it's Foster following him. Two quick Utah personals here in the first minute of the second quarter. Knocked away from Wennington. Ball loose, chased down by Foster. But then he loses it. An unforced error to use tennis terminology. There were two white shirts there. See, Bob, the difference right now is when you're resting Michael Jordan with Pippen hurt, he's not out there with the anchor of that second team. Now you've got a team out there. Who's going to run the show? Who's going to be the guy to make sure that they run their offense and get the shots that they want? So this really hurts with Scottie Pippen being out of the lineup right now because you have to rest Michael Jordan at some point. Who coach is the only starter for either team on the floor right now. Foster on Tony. Wennington travels. Playing out of character. Bill Winnington is a catch-and-shoot player. He's not a guy, Isaiah, that puts the ball on the floor. Rodman to the scorer's table. He'll have to wait till the next whistle. Which comes almost right away. Another illegal defense against Chicago, the fourth. Now, see, the reason that's illegal is Chris Morris is out above the three-point line. Judd Bushler can be no lower than the foul line. When he drops below that foul line, he's automatically illegal. So Isley is selected to shoot the tee. After the first illegal defense, every subsequent one against you results in a technical foul shot. See, Chris Morris is going to be out above the free throw. Look where Bushler is. He's illegal right now. So that's the call, and that's why they get the free throw. Utah by six. Foster on the move. And throws it away. Two atrocious turnovers by Foster on consecutive possessions. Try to do too much. Keep the game simple. You'll get minutes on the floor. Kukoc. Chris Morris pulls in the rebound. Carr from Isley. Missed it off the glass. Rodman, good pass to Kukoc. Straight back cut by Kukoc. He set him up, then back cut, faked him off the screen. Great pass by Rodman. Great look by Kukoc. See, I say, though, Foster's got to push him over the top. That's what they did in the game, uh, game five, and Tony got seven points to start the game. Carr trying to back in on Rodman. It's off Anderson's hands, but recovered by Isley. Two seconds to shoot. And he hits the three! A 
Are they calling the shot clock violation? Let's see. Dick Pavetta says yes. And they wave it off, though it appeared to me as if he had beaten it. See if the ball isn't out of his hand. One second. It's on the way, and they missed the call. I'm out with Utah's lead, still only four. Well, that's a big break for the Chicago Bulls. Howard Isley lets this shot go. He gets it out of his hands, and you're going to see here, look, the shot clock actually should be at one here, but the ball is off. Right there, you see it. The ball is in the air at one. That should have counted. That's a big turnaround, and the Bulls get a big break there. Instead of up seven, Utah, now it's only a four-point game. Jim Gray tells us that on the Utah bench, Jerry Sloan said, that's horrible, but I can't get thrown out of the game. He already has one technical and can't risk another. We have a further report on Scottie Pippen. Here's Ahmad. All right, Bob, I just found out that Scott, they're working on Scottie Pippen in the back, and I've been told that Scottie says he's telling the medical staff that he is not able to play. So that could be the end of it for Scottie tonight. Bob? Judd Bushler, who may get more minutes as a result, hits the shot from the side. Michael Jordan is also back in after resting about two and a half minutes at the outset of the second quarter. Now, if you remember, Bushler came in and gave Chicago big minutes in that Indiana series. He's going to need to do that again here tonight with no Pippen. Malone around Rodman to the hoop and missed it. Out of bounds, off Utah. See, Luke Longley was just big there around the basket, and he forced Malone into a miss. Carl tried to get contact to get the foul, and it caused him to miss the layup, but Longley stood strong that time. Utah does not have a single offensive rebound in this game. In game five, they had better success on the offensive glass than at any other time in the series. Contact between Anderson and Kerr. Offensive foul on Chicago. See, teams really complain a lot about this because this is a, a pet play by Chicago. They make this little inside reverse pivot. Watch Kerr as the man goes by, and he bumps him off on the turn. That's a good call. I know in coaching against Chicago, I used to always warn the officials on that play because if you're going to let him turn, it's a very difficult play to guard, see? It's like the 49ers linemen used to do with that whiplash play where they kick their feet out and throw the, defend the, the defenders off balance. Now it's Bushler who's nailed with a personal. Isley has just gone out. Stockton back in at point guard. Ryan Russell has also returned to Utah's lineup. That's Russell with the ball. Malone from Carr. And he walked with it. See, Antoine Carr's got to be ready to step in and shoot that ball. They're doubling down on the block now, and Carl Malone swung him to basketball. He's got to shoot it. Those are the same shots he had the other night in game five that he buried to help them get the win. The Bulls can tie with a basket here or take the lead with a three. Jordan in and out on him. And Carr claims it. Carr from Stockton. There you go. There you go. Now you see Carr pull up and hit the 15-footer. But a moment ago, he pulled up and missed that little easy bank shot off the glass. The 15-footer dead on is a better shot for him to take than the one off the glass. Jordan wheels inside around Anderson. And again, it's a two-point game. Michael has 10. Malone in traffic. Got his own and put it back in. That's that first offensive rebound that you talked about. Malone get it and got two points. Malone feels very confident against Lonely and Rodman right now. He feels that he can get anything that he wants underneath. 
Jordan, daylight for three. 13 for Michael, Utah by one. If Pippen can't go the rest of this game, and if there is a game seven, inside it goes to Carr, and he hits the layup. How much more of the load can Jordan possibly carry? He played 45 minutes on Friday night. It's taking him a whole lot of shots to get his points through the finals. But if he doesn't step up, other than Kuko, who else can? Here is Tony. To, to follow up on your point, Bob, this would be a very wearing game for Jordan. To try to tire him down and wear him out. It'd be interesting to see if he'll have enough at the end of the game because of the minutes he's going to have to play. Malone, tough catch, gathers it in, fade away. Car to follow. Knocked away from behind, and he was fouled. It's number one on Jordan. John Stockton with a beautiful pass in rhythm to Antoine Carr and the pull-up jump shot on the secondary break. And then Carl Malone working once again in the post. He backs himself down strong. Misses it, but the great effort and the great hands to get the ball back and the finish. And in a give and go, the back door. The weak side help, Anderson finds Antoine Carr underneath, and the little finger roll, and Utah leads by one. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center. Now an update on Scotty Pippen. The time that he was doing the stretching, trying to see if he could come back and play, he was in the official's dressing room trying to get the stretching. He has now moved from that locker room to his own locker room, but the word is that he's still unable to play. Bob? Ahmad, thanks a lot. What was the most important regular season game of the year? Undoubtedly the one at midseason here at the Delta Center where Utah trailed the Bulls by 24 points early, 41-17, and rallied to win. Changed the outcome of that one game. And this series would have opened and ended if a sixth and seventh were required in Chicago rather than in Salt Lake City. It was that win that gave Utah home court and gives them a game seven if one is necessary here at the Delta Center rather than on the road. And do the Bulls face the remainder of this game and a possible seventh game either without Scottie Pippen or with a weakened Scottie Pippen? See, with the Bulls depleted right now, the Jazz must keep the pace of this game up. They've got to use their superior depth and just keep trying to wear Michael Jordan down. Jordan into the lane. Tough shot. He was fouled. He'll come to the line with a chance to tie it. So they really made the switch in game five. They started Russell on him, did a good job, and then they came in with Anderson. They put Hornacek on Pippen, and that really had to, an effect because Michael had to work a little bit harder in the post against Russell. This is the 103rd game of the season for the Bulls and for Michael Jordan. Antoine Carr going out. Jordan hasn't missed a single game since he returned from baseball. Ron Harper returns to the Chicago lineup. He has also played more minutes than at any time since the 92 season when he was a much younger man. And now with Pippen ailing, he'll be asked to do even more if that's possible. Malone slips it through a crowd to Anderson who misses the floater. Rodman juggles the rebound, but saves it in. Only his second rebound tonight, and only his fifth in the last game and a half, after such a strong performance in game four. Michael springs free and takes the lob from Kukoc. Great roll off for Russell. Faked up and spent off him. Kukoc put it right there for the easy lay-in for Jordan. I'm noticing, Doug, every time Malone gets it on the low post now, they're coming to double team, trying to keep Rodman out of foul trouble. Hornacek returns it to Malone. Now has it back in a crowd. 
and misses. Anderson flies in, can't hit the tip. Malone, another try, and there it is for Utah. You see, Rodman didn't even try to contest that shot underneath. Don't want to get in foul trouble, so Malone's going to have his way down there. Just have to be careful and take his time and not draw offensive foul. Riding the seesaw, now it's Utah's turn to lead. Stockton knocked it away, Chicago ball. Phil's still lobbying for that travel on Malone on the last possession, but ain't gonna happen. Michael, head fake, he traveled. So Phil got the traveling call, but certainly not on the guy he wanted. And Steve Kerr just said to Pavetta, hey, call it on Malone down at the other end. I talked to Rodman after the last game, and he felt that Malone traveled a lot. That's why he was able to get away from him. Malone in the lane. Up and under against Rodman. He's getting such deep position right now in Rodman. The, the Utah Jazz are executing their offense to perfection. 18 for the mailman. Jordan for three. And there's his answer. I think that's his third three of the game, Bob. And going into this game, he, two coach and Pippen were a combined four for 23 from three at the Delta Center in the first two games. It is his third tonight, and he has 19 points. Malone tries to answer, and can, and he has 20. A Jordan Malone duel shaping up in game six. Who coach on the run? He's in double figures now with 10. Isaiah, how much is it going to take him to figure out that he's a left-handed player? And you can't let him come with a strong hand. You got to send him back to help. He's such a good dribbler, and he gives you that hitch move, and it draws you out of position, and he gets you every time with it. Who coach on Russell. Gives him some room, and Russell accepts the challenge and drills the jumper. Utah by two. You got to make Tony Kukoc play defense, and that's what Brian Russell did on that possession. It was Russell's first basket. Here's Michael. He's got 21. I'm watching Jordan, and he's in such a nice rhythm offensively. Everything is coming very easy to him. And right now, they have to be really careful because this looks like this could be a 40-point game from him. Tied at 43. Shaping up as a higher scoring game than we've generally had in this series. It's Hornacek. See, Malone is getting the ball on the block where he wants it. The running splits, the running post-ups, and the Jazz are in a great rhythm right now. Timeout Chicago. Utah by two with 1.49 to play in the half. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, Hannah Storm talks with Phil Jackson, who reflects on his years with the Chicago Bulls. Some pretty good memories, lots of question marks for the immediate future for the coach of the five-time world champions. That's at halftime. Let's watch the Michael Jordan possession that he scored on. Brian Russell, as he cuts, is going to give him a shot. Michael doesn't like it. Michael delivers a blow right there. So Russell pushes him back, and he catches it. Now you got an angry Michael Jordan. He squares up and buries the shot. So the referees let both of them get a blow in, and Michael finished with a jump shot. 8 of 14 thus far. Down by two, the Bulls put it in play. Jordan's the guy they want, even more so than usual, and that's why. 15 of his 23 have come in this quarter. Hornacek. Off the back iron. After the missed three, Chicago comes back, looking to take the lead. Russell trying to contend with Michael. Finally, he misses one. Anderson tries to save it, but was on the line. 
Bob, the, the only thing you can hope for right now is that Michael Jordan's <laughs> going to run out of energy because he is in an unbelievable scoring mode. The back up and the fade away, and he hits the jump shot, then he comes back the next time, but he's wanting the ball in every possession. Can he play at this pace if Scottie Pippen can't play at all in the second half? If ever there has been an athlete, at least in recent history, able to will himself beyond even his considerable physical talents, it has been Michael Jordan. As Skip Bayless of the Chicago Tribune put it earlier in the playoffs, he's that rarest of athletes, a supremely talented overachiever. Stockton's all over Kerr. Now it's Hornacek on Michael. Fade away. He's missed two in a row now. Hornacek brings it back the other way. Stockton from Malone. Beautiful slip on that play. Stockton went across like he was going to set the screen on Longley. Michael relaxed just a moment. He slipped it. The give and go, Isaiah. That was a beautiful play. And Doug, now that Malone has really taken advantage of Chicago inside, now the perimeter will free up. Now they have to pay attention to Malone. Now Stockton and Hornacek will be able to step up and play and get involved. They were just putting a couple of seconds back onto the clock. Michael for three. Hornacek takes the rebound. Jordan had made three three-pointers earlier in the half. He's now missed three shots in succession. Big possession here for the Jazz. A chance to get this crowd alive and up four going in at half. Shot clock and game clock virtually identical. Stockton, foul. Chicago had a foul to give. Utah ball from the side, still plenty of time. 6.9. They love to run high screen roll here with Stockton and Malone. Hornacek works in behind the ball or, more, or uh, Russell for a three-point shot. The foul was on Kerr, his second. He goes out, Harper in. Better defensive player anyway. Malone, the bounce to Russell. Two big assists in the last couple of possessions for Malone. Three seconds. Michael to half court from there. Almost. So Jordan had 23 matching his number in the first half but missed his last four. Malone generally more accurate in the course of scoring 20. Utah by four. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center where the Jazz lead the Bulls by four. Now the big story here in the first half has been the condition of Scottie Pippen's back. He has really been hurting. But during the halftime, the massage therapist gave him ice, massage. His back was having spasms. He got the spasms to stop. And Scottie Pippen is back out here on the floor. Whether or not he'll be able to play and play effectively, we'll find out. He is starting the second half. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Ahmad. Well, they thought that Scottie Pippen was going to be out of the game, so Jerry Sloan told his guys they were going to focus a lot more attention on Michael Jordan. All of that, of course, could change now. Very unhappy with the way they defended the screens. He wants them to get over the screens instead of running through them. Happy with everything offensively. Bob? All right, Jim, and here we go. Utah in possession as we start the third quarter. Malone right to work. Hornacek on Pippen. It's Kukoc. The three spins out. Hornacek with rebound position. Utah in front by six. Stockton pounding the dribble into the floor. Now into the lane he goes. Outside to Russell. Head fake. Now Stockton. Air ball grabbed by Keith. Locked back in his face by Pippen and a 24-second violation as they never hit the rim. Now remember when Adam Keefe was in the game as a starter, Utah got off to a very slow first quarter start because they were playing four on five. So if that starts to occur, Jerry Sloan might have to go to his bench. Adam Keefe has got to be an offensive rebounder. He's got to be aggressive. Four of the first five games were very close and very exciting. But through the first half, this is actually the best played game, the best pace and rhythm of any of the games of the series. 
Longley. Out to Scotty with five seconds to shoot. It'll be Kukoc. He has 12. Now Scotty's back out on the floor, but he's still moving very gingerly. Malone, inside, and a whistle. Before the shot, and a Chicago foul. Now you watch Scotty Pippen, and let's take a look at how he's running. You see, he's laboring to get up and down the court. That back is still bothering him. Let's see how he goes. The foul was Longley's third. Stopped and stumbles. And on the steal, Chicago recovers the ball and asks for timeout. Coach, is that the time you want to use one? It, it does preserve the possession, but you use up a timeout. Well, Phil has the option here to take a 20 if he wants it, so it looks like he wants to save his 20, use the timeout now. Harper with a great hustle play. You want to see him roll over and get the timeout before Utah can force the jump ball. So we'll step aside with 10.03 to play in the third. Miller Genuine Draft presents even more basketball. Well, the last two MVPs have been Michael Jordan and Carl Malone. So you see them working their magic. Michael feels the pressure reverses for the lob. The fading jump shot has been terrific. And Carl Malone with the great hands in the second shot. Then the deep post position on Rodman in the layup. And he, too, with the fading jump shot. So both of these guys have been terrific for their individual teams today. It's been the best played game offensively we've had in the series. And in recognition of this look inside the game, Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Chicago ball down by four. Pippen's jumper over Hornacek will go. Malone waits for the traffic to clear, then hands to Stockton. Malone against Longley. And a foul, and if it's Longley, it's his fourth. He's just not quick enough, Isaiah, to get up and body him because when he makes the first quick step, Luke can't slide over and get in front of him. He sticks his knee out. Now, this is twice in this quarter. Malone has gotten a layup the first possession, and now he's gotten two fouls. He bodies up against him. He sticks the left knee out, and Malone goes right to the basket to get the contact. Longley's got to be a little smarter down there. He's giving Malone no resistance, Doug. I'm watching him as he's moving around. He's not even trying to guard him. Just poor defense by Longley. And great offense by Malone. He sits. Rodman enters. Russell for three. Malone in between two red shirts pulls it down. And now he and Rodman all tangled up. And it's Malone's turn to laugh and taunt a bit. It's a great hustle play by Carl Malone. You're going to see him. He just wants the basketball. Two Chicago Bulls. And he reaches in there with those powerful arms and just rips it away. The foul on Dennis Rodman. His second. Hornacek into the lane. Knocked away from him, but another Chicago foul. It's the Bulls' fourth foul, barely more than three minutes into the period. Utah doesn't have one yet. Michael hit with his second. This summer, NBC gives you double Frasers every week. Tuesday at its regular time and a Sunday episode, too. Must see comedy with Frazier Tuesday and Sunday all summer on NBC. It's so important for Carl Malone to attack the defense, Isaiah. So even though he doesn't shoot free throws, he gets him in foul trouble. Now four team fouls. So from here on in, the next foul that the Bulls commit, Utah will shoot free throws. That could be very vital for them scoring here in this third period. Doug, I love the way Carl Malone is playing right now. I mean, he's doing everything for the Utah Jazz. Jordan pulls up 
and connects. 25 for MJ. See, Jerry Sloan is very upset. Adam Keith did not show out on that screen. Michael came off there, not with the idea of passing. He, know, he knew his team needed two points. Malone from 20. Oh. Keith got a hand on it and then pokes it away from Jordan and out of bounds. Pippen is on the floor, but not with his usual ball handling responsibilities. This is Scotty out high, immediately returns it to Harper. A little jump hook is good. Just the presence of Pippen on the floor, you've got to be able to honor him, and he's a great post feeder. Chicago back to within two. Malone from Hornacek. Rodman managed to wrest it away from him, then Harper takes it. Malone argues that he was fouled. It's Kukoc dealing it out to, to Rodman. Harper trying to tie the game, but hold on, says Danny Crawford. Foul on Stockton is second. Now Malone got great post position here. He's got to finish this play. He leaves it short on the rim, and then the second effort, he thought he got fouled on the wrist there, and he did get fouled, so he should be upset on that play. Adam Keefe out, Chris Morris in for Utah. Here's Jordan. Off the back iron, Rodman trying to keep it alive. A tremendous hustling attempt, but Utah gets the ball. Now you're saying, why Chris Morris? Because he's a better offensive player, and he can play against a Tony Kukoc. You say, why not Antoine Parr? I think Jerry Sloan knows he's only got so much gas in his tank, and he'd like to have it for the fourth quarter. through his hands and Rodman takes it. I don't know, Doug, if I'm Jerry Sloan, I put Antoine Carr in the game. I don't mess around. I don't mess around with Chris Morris. Who coach? Can't tie it. Malone clears it. Stockton into the lane, tried the up and under on Harper, but it wouldn't go. And Chicago gets it back. That rhythm and flow, which we saw almost throughout the first half, pretty much has disappeared here in a choppy third quarter. Bob, I just saw eye contact. Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan. Scotty normally brings the ball up. He said, Michael, you come get it. Michael does not want to bring the ball up the floor. He has to use too much energy that way. Is Pippen anything more than a decoy now on offense for Chicago? He's the initiator of the offense. That's all he can do is be a post feeder and be a presence out there just so that they have to honor him. Four seconds to shoot. Jordan missed it just before the shot clock sounds. Rodman battling like crazy, but can't quite hold on to it. Hornacek, he and Malone, Rodman and Malone, and Rodman just trips Malone up. They gotta call a flagrant here. They've got to call a flagrant. It's the third on Rodman. He and Carl Malone, regrettably, are scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to lower himself to that is anyone's guess. And Rodman apparently wants to start the wrestling now. I tell you what, I love what I'm seeing, the battle between these two guys. They're fighting, giving it everything they got. Both of them are trying to push and shove and gain position. Carl Malone gives them a little knock. But at the end of the play, what I like the most it's Malone and Rodman both gave each other a pat on the, on the butt and said, hey, that's the way we play. That's the way we like to play. Was a flagrant called for there? What do you think? I, I don't think that's a flagrant foul. The officials looked at, at the play, and they knew both of them were bumping and shoving. I think that's just good, hard-nosed basketball. We'll be back. Well, the series was way too pretty here in the first half. Now they're getting down to the basketball we've seen. Rodman and Malone go down, that's one. Here they go, two. Finally, the third time the foul is called, and I think it was a good no call. 
that it wasn't a flagrant because I think both guys were wrestling. And now watch Michael Jordan give Brian Russell a shot, and then Russell gives Michael a little pushback. So all of a sudden, temper's starting to flare here a little, Bob, as we get down to the game six here in the fourth quarter. Rodman very ineffective thus far. Just lost the best out of three balls to Malone. And after I watched the whole replay, I'd agree with you guys that a flagrant wasn't called for because Malone had thrown that elbow up around the chin just before Rodman tripped him at the end of the whole wrestling sequence. So probably best just to call the foul on Rodman and leave it at that. And Bob, that's Dennis Rodman's way of trying to get in Carl Malone's head. However, Carl Malone is smart enough as a basketball player that he's not going to let that throw him out of his rhythm. We saw where Dennis Rodman would get Alonzo Mourning out of his rhythm or some of the other guys. Malone understands Dennis Rodman, and he's not going to let that stack bother him. Malone has 23. And can't add to it. Kukoc takes it down. Chicago trails by three as we move inside six minutes to play in the third. Here's Pippen. The bad back makes Hornacek's assignment on him a whole lot easier. Left alone, he doesn't take the three. Michael, fade away. See, if I'm Hornacek, I make Pippen make one of those shots. He's really rushing out to, to close out on him. He's got to show me he can shoot that ball before I'm too concerned with him. I got to be more worried about Michael Jordan. Jordan has 27 to Malone's 23. Here's Malone again. He was fouled. The basket would have counted, but it wouldn't stay down. It's on Pippen his first. Now you watch Michael Jordan on the repost, takes a quick bounce, the reverse spin, fakes Russell out and shoots a nice fadeaway tape. But I agree with you, Doug. I will make Scottie Pippen make one of those three-point shots before I leave Michael Jordan alone in the low post. Malone is averaging 23.8 for the series coming into this game. That's exactly what he averaged in the six-game loss last year to Chicago. That average will go up a bit after today. Makes them both. <laughs> Michael's pass to Scotty. And finally, the tip drops. Rodman gets credit for the basket, but it looked like Pippen was not able to show us the usual body control that he'd normally have to finish off that play. Usually he would dunk that ball. Harper on the foul this time. See, Isaiah, normally Scotty catches this ball in the back door and jumps up and power dunks this. You can see he could barely get off the floor, but Rodman with a great tip. And when you have a back injury, Doug, it's hard for you to squat and use your legs to get the lift. So therefore, you're jumping from a standstill and straight up position. Tonight on Dateline Sunday, a tornado rips through the Midwest. And the program also has survivor stories from Mount Rainier. That's Dateline tonight after the game. It's at 10 o'clock for those of you on the West Coast. Harper grabs the rebound as Stockton makes one of two. Utah by two. Jordan. Off target, rebound Malone. Hornacek driving on Jordan, knocked away from him. Still Utah ball. Four on the shot clock. When Malone grabbed that last rebound, it was noticeable that Rodman backed away. He's already got three fouls, speaking of Dennis. And with Longley on the bench with four fouls and pretty much ineffective throughout the series when he has been in there, Rodman's got to be very careful. Knocked out, three on the shot clock. Howard Isley back on the floor now. 
Stockton getting a breather with 4.15 to play in the third. Pippen got a hand on it. They've got to shoot it in a hurry, and they can't get it off in time. 24-second violation against the Jazz. Is it time, as we get a quick look at Jerry Sloan and the laboring Scottie Pippen, is it about car time again? Well, I think what Jerry's trying to do is buy as many minutes as possible. He's still got a two-point lead. And Antoine Carr is a guy that maybe gives him 24, 25 points, and here he comes, or 25 minutes. Here he comes right back into the game. So Jerry realized that he needs somebody out there that can shoot the basketball. Pippen giving it his best, and that time it was good enough. As we said, with that back injury, that little jump hook in the middle is an easier shot for Pippen to shoot because he can extend with his, with his long reach and his arm length. Tied at 57. Hornacek had a good first half and hits this one. They're really making Michael work on a lot of splits. Hornacek is being very active. They know that Michael is the majority of the offense today, so they've got to keep him in motion. 15 for Hornacek. Now trying to guard Pippen. Scotty splits the defense, can't hit the bank, but Rodman with a second tip. That's the energy we talked about that the Bulls needed from Dennis Rodman. He gave them nothing in the first half. That's two tip-ins for four points here in this third period. A whistle from Danny Crawford, a Chicago foul. It's on Pippen, and it's his second. You watch Pippen in the low post. They come to double team with Russell. And as he goes up for the shot, that leaves Rodman's clear for a clear tap in on the offensive glass. Now you watch Pippen trying to get up and down the court. He's really laboring and really working hard. Scotty has come out. Two coach Burrell and Kerr all in. There's Pippen heading back to the locker room again to try to stretch out. That ailing back. Russell missed the first, but connects on the second. Utah by one. Well, the only thing that's saving Utah in this quarter to keep them in the lead is the free throw line. Those early fouls have hurt Chicago, and Utah's taking advantage of it. Two coach knocked away, and there's a Utah foul. It's just their second of the period. Doug, I've watched Jordan the last four plays, and he's picking his spots to get some rest out on the court. He's not playing Hornacek as tough because I think he knows that at the end of the game, he's going to have to have a lot of energy. Rodman out to Michael. Now screening for him. Morris fights through the screen. Michael takes him baseline, draws the contact and the foul. Michael's going to go to the line. Chicago, which generally has had many more free throws throughout the series than Utah, has hit four of five free throws in this game. Utah, 15 of 21. As you said earlier, Doug, a huge difference. Well, Chicago's done a good job now in this quarter of disrupting Utah's offense. It's not flowing as easily as it was. They took the fouls. They've got them on the free throw line. But you're not seeing the same open looks. I think with Rodman being out there, he really helped disrupt Malone's timing. Now Longley's back in the game. So we'll see if they're able to attack him either with Carr or Carl Malone. Kukoc goes out as Longley checks back in. Tied again at 60. Malone left block where he likes it best against Rodman. When the double comes, he dishes it out to Carr. Now it's Hornacek. Three seconds to shoot. Now they're going to have to force it. Hornacek off the back rim. Carr on the board. But there's a loose ball foul on Antoine Carr. You see, it's his second. You see how the Utah is using so much of the shot clock now? That's not what they did in the first half, Bob. They got their shots up earlier in the clock. Now the Bulls have them working against that shot clock. They're not getting good looks. And they're going to have to speed up the tempo of their offense now. Jordan on the move against Morris. Double pumps. Misses the scoop. Malone will clear it. Inside two minutes to play in the period. Yeah. 
Antoine Carr missed it. I think the one guy that needs to get involved for Chicago right now is Luke Lonely. He had to take a shot the whole game. He's got to put some pressure on Malone in that low post. Here's Burrell. He's off target. Back comes Utah looking for the lead. It's Chris Morris. Hornacek in the right place at the right time. You see early offense, they got the shot up and they didn't let Chicago get back and get set up. And so even though they missed it, they got a chance for a second shot opportunity. 17 for Hornacek. Easily his best game since game two. Michael confronted by Carr after he blew by Morris. And Jordan will come to the line. The fast break here by Chris Morris. He doesn't get the shot to go, but you see Chicago now not guarding a man, really, but an area. And there's Hornacek with the offensive rebound, Isaiah. They got to uh, pick up the tempo a little bit. Right now, it's become too half court, and Chicago's got him uh, in, in a situation using too much clock. Michael misses the first as we check in with Jim Gray. All right, John Stockton is now back on the bench. He was in the locker room for about the past seven minutes. He was getting a chiropractic adjustment several places. He felt a little twinge, went back there, saw the chiropractor. They've worked it all out, and he will return to the game. Bob? He's been struggling with something of a sore back throughout this series. One of two. Utah by one and with the ball. Isley hands it to Carr. Isley much more effective here on his home floor than he was in Chicago. Gets the assist there. Longley shot. Isley the rebound. Last shot of the quarter here. Be big for Utah if they get a score. It will push it to five or six. They're on their feet at the Delta Center. Huron Isley around Keith's screen. Now he gets it back. And hits just before the buzzer. minutes from pushing this to a game seven. Utah leads by five, getting a rare contribution, at least in this series, from Adam Key. We're back after these words from your local station. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Howard Isley, after a miserable game five with no points and five turnovers, today has been big. He's helped rest Stockton. You see the kick down to Antoine Carr and the dunk. And in the last possession of the quarter, makes a pass that Adam Keith makes a terrific catch on behind him and finishes. Today, Isley has one point and three assists, no turnovers. He's given him good numbers off the bench. And Carl Malone likes the fact that he's watching and his team is increasing the lead. As we start the fourth quarter, Michael Jordan has scored 29 points. He's 10 of 24. At one time, he was 9 of 15. That means he's just one of his last nine. He's played 34 of the 36 minutes so far after playing 45 of 48 on Friday night. Remember, in the fourth quarter Friday, he was just one of seven from the floor. You have to believe fatigue is an important factor now. I think with Michael Jordan, he's smart enough to rest on defense and try to conserve his energy for offense. Here he is on offense. And he'll be coming to the foul line just as the fourth quarter starts. But even those poundings take something out of him, right, as he goes to the basket. Now, those are the things that take the most energy out of you. And the reason why, because if you can imagine yourself, if you had to wrestle with an individual for two minutes, that's very tiring, tiresome. However, when you're running up and down the court, that's an aerobic exercise. That doesn't take a lot out of you. So him going to the basket, taking that pounding, that takes a lot more out of you. And also, right now is normally the time that Michael Jordan rests. He tries to rest the first couple minutes of the fourth quarter without Pippen. 
he's not going to get that rest. So we'll see what that does as the game wears on. But Jordan is the one individual that I've seen in this game since I've played that can carry his team in the fourth quarter, even when he's fatigued. He's already played more games and more minutes than at any time in his career. Isley, big hoop for Utah. Tell me confidence isn't an unbelievable thing. This is the same kid we watched in game five who didn't even want to dribble the basketball. Today, he's making some big plays for his team. Jordan against Anderson. He's still Michael Jordan. Whatever he has lost through fatigue, through age, through whatever, has only brought him somewhat back to the field. He still leads the field. Morris out of the corner. Rodman with board position on Antoine Carr. Chris Morris has had a lot of open looks at threes like that in this series. Usually he's pretty good with them. In this series, he hasn't been able to hit them. Rodman drills a 20-footer and gives it that go figure gesture. Now remember, in game two in here, he hit that same shot to tie the game. This one brings him to within one. Isley returns it to Keefe on the screen roll, and he blows the dunk. He argues that he was fouled, but he should have finished it anyway. Now Keith heads for the bench, and Malone comes back. Chicago can take the lead. See, now Malone has to guard Kukoc now on the perimeter. Watch that matchup. Jordan between the legs and the jumper. Off target, rebound Morris. Malone hands it back to Morris, who converts on the reverse. Timeout, Chicago. Now you watch Jordan using all his energy on offense. To go drive hard to the left, to shoot the fadeaway Jay. And then Rodman, go figure, right? Lined up straight in, shoot the right in, and even he's surprised. And you, you watch Chris Morris moving without the basketball, Malone with the beautiful feed, Morris with the reverse layup off the glass, Beautiful basketball by Utah. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center. Now the strategy on, on Scotty Pippen, they had him in the back, they were putting ice on his back and electrical stimulation, the pain relief, and they were trying to buy their time up until the 10 minute mark to bring him back out and see if he could play the last 10 minutes of the game. As you can see, he's back. He's on the floor. We just have to see how it goes. Bob? Ahmad, thanks. Michael George's first rest of the second half, and you'd have to guess it will be brief. Utah right now has got to force Bill Jackson's hand. They've got to stop him, and they've got to get some scores to make him come back and not get his normal rest. Kukoc spins to the hoop and misses the bank. Bushler chases it down. They got a new shot clock. I didn't see that ball hit the rim. Kukoc out of the corner. That one's short. And Malone grabs the rebound. And he asked for a 20-second timeout because he was in danger of toppling out of bounds. I think what you're going to see right now with Chicago is Tony Kukoc is going to try to put the pressure defensively on Carl Malone. Isaiah, he's an all-time, he's a, a first-team defensive player but he's used to playing around the basket. New coach can beat him with his speed, and let's see if he tries to break him down out on the perimeter. And the dangerous player, and the X factor for Chicago on the floor right now is Jeb Butchler. Keep your eye on him, because he'll come up with the hustle plays and the energy plays to keep Chicago involved. Stockton now is back into the game after that 20-second timeout, so he too has had back problems. He's back in now for the finish. Until he has exploded in the last couple of games, 
All the talk about Carl Malone concerned is scoring, but he has always been a terrific all-round player. Tonight, more evidence. 25 points, yes, but 10 rebounds and 6 assists. And we still have 9-16 remaining. Stockton on the dribble against Kerr, trying to find Malone, but they get a hand on it, and Rodman grabs it. Coach, a three would tie it. Four seconds to shoot. Stockton knocked it away from Kerr. Malone tumbles. Should be a 24 second violation since no one had established clear possession of that loose ball, and that is what's called. How about Carl Malone going for this loose ball? Now, John Stockton normally will come up with this ball. You can see he can't bend over with that back, but Carl Malone with a great hustle play. That gives his team that opportunity now for the loose ball and the 24-second shot clock violation. Michael is at the scorer's table. He's coming back. The next time play stops. Remember now, they like to go to Anderson in the post on Bushler. Carr from 20 feet. It spins out and Rodman is there. Brian Russell comes off Jerry Sloan's bench as soon as he saw that Jordan was about to come back in. He calls on Russell, who probably will guard it. Kukoc to tie it. There was a great screen by Steve Kerr to open up Tony Kukoc, sacrificed his body, took on the bigger Malone, so Kukoc can nail the three. 15 for Tony. Utah's got to get some movement. Morris to a cutting Anderson who was bumped the basket. A count. It does. Bob, you can see now Carl Malone has a tough time on the perimeter. He doesn't like to play out here, so he gets bumped and he just tries to run through the screen. Kukoc gets the bare three and knocks it down. And in the good movement here, you got to get a slash and a cut to get to the basket. Too much standing around for Utah. An opportunity now for the three-point play, which they get. The foul on Kerr was his third. Jordan back in. Takes the pass from Pippen. Russell is on him. He gets by him. Now Carr comes over and commits the foul. You see, they're so conscious of Michael Jordan coming off the screen. He gave Russell the fake. Then he came baseline, and watch as he braces himself to absorb the contact, knows that he's going to get fouled, he's going to go to the line. Watch Jordan at the end of this game, the last seven minutes, Doug, attacking the basket, trying to get to the foul line. See, Michael is too good at finishing, though. You can't give him that baseline drive because he's going to get fouled. Isaiah, you got to push him back to the middle where you can help. Jordan is now 7 of 10 at the line. Kerr out, Harper in. We're told that the brief stoppage was because of a sign one of the fans was holding, and it had some offensive language on it. So they had it removed. Dennis Rodman, we're told, was the only player to protest its removal. Hornacek guarded by Jordan. Malone over Dennis. Rebound Pippen. Hornacek slapping at it. Scotty just hobbling around. The foul is on Antoine Carr. And that's his fourth. Utah has gotten very stagnant here right now, Isaiah. They've really bogged down and really started in the third quarter. The free throw line kept them in it. But right now, they're really struggling scoring. And this is where Chicago's defense has been dominant against Utah in the fourth quarter. Jordan with the jumper. And with 37 points, 
as Utah falls behind now for the first time since midway through the second quarter. See, he's handed for 40. I would start double teaming Jordan every time he touched it. Brian Russell went down, and there's a foul on Kukoc. You, know, you talk about wanting to bring Jordan to the middle, but his game is so complete. And when you bring him to the middle, he's able to come right to that right hand, square up, and shoot it right from the free throw line. It's Chicago by one, and you're watching the NBA on NBC. Welcome back to the Delta Center. I'm Jim Gray. Jerry Sloan, during this timeout, told his team we can't keep playing this stagnant offense and walking the ball up the court. We need some cutters. He wants to push the ball, try and get some fast break opportunities off the rebounds. Wants him to set some picks and run off the picks, create some movement in the offense. Bob? Jim, thanks. A look at the numbers for Jordan and Malone. Jerry Sloan wants fast break points. They have to turn to John Stockton right now to push the tempo. And thus far, he's only attempted four field goals, at four, five points, four assists, and three turnovers. You know Stockton what? has to come through big for him down the stretch. What's happened also, too, when Malone's getting the rebound, he's holding it and rather than outlooking where they can run. Here is Stockton with Harper on him. Antoine Carr. Malone, three defenders on him, and they take it away. It's Pippen wincing as he comes up with the loose ball. Jordan over Hornacek. Short. A whistle underneath from Danny Crawford. Stay right here. Loose ball foul on Utah. See, Malone's catching the ball in the post. He's getting double and triple team right now. He's got to be a passer out of this post. You see Pippen there knock the ball away from him. But if there are three guys on him and you space the floor, somebody's got to be open. And Doug, what Chicago is saying right now, we're not going to let Carl Malone beat us. Someone else is going to have to step, step up and beat us tonight. Pippen, who can barely move, throws it in. In almost any other situation, he couldn't possibly be playing. Regular season, never. Even earlier in the playoffs, he'd probably be sitting. Jordan again. And Stockton pulls it down. This is where they got to push it. Get something quickly. Underneath to Carl. And he was fouled. It was a nice feed by John Stockton. Pushing it up the court. Catching Malone early in the offense. Right underneath the basket. Malone did a great job of sealing and drawing the foul. Four on Rodman. Michael's upset with himself right now. He's missed two jump shots that would have given his team a three-point lead. He's really upset about that because both of them were very makeable shots that Michael normally makes. And Russell has done a good job guarding Michael Jordan, forcing him to shoot jump shots and not really allowing him to get to the basket. Malone busting loose with the huge game on Friday night. He had 20 in the first half. He's at 26 now after the free throw. Jordan leads all scorers with 37. He's 13 of 30 from the floor. Utah back in front by one. Steve Kerr now in for Chicago. Remember, he spaces the floor and gives them another shooter if they do start running at Michael and scrambling their defense. Michael again. Russell takes it down. Stockton has a little daylight, and Utah has a three-point lead. Transition basketball again. The little screen by Malone, and he hits the open jump shot. Who coach? Kerr. Pippen in the lane. Connects on the turnaround, playing through clenched teeth. Malone. Rodman wins the rebound battle. 
That's a bad foul on Malone now because that's the fifth team foul. Now Rodman will shoot two free throws, but Stockton pushing the ball up the floor. You see the screen right there by Antoine Carr, and Scottie Pippen cannot help out. And then Scottie Pippen with a quick post up in the lane and the gutty effort by Scottie Pippen here. You can see as he catches the ball, it's so difficult, but he's got those long arms and can still score over Hornacek. The foul on Malone a moment ago was only his second. Rodman to the line. Remember, he made four clutch free throws in game four. This one is long. Over the year, he's a 55% free throw shooter. You see, Isaiah, he shot that ball. As he shot it, he sort of walked away from it. He's got to stay with that shot. Yeah, he didn't even take a look at the basket. He has to get set, take a look at it, and knock it down. 4.46 left. If he hits this, he can tie it. Stockton glancing at the clock as he comes across. Four and a half minutes for Utah to end its season or prolong it. Stockton, five seconds to shoot. It's Hornacek. Malone. They'll bring it back out. The jumper by Carl. Utah back in front. Great patience. Offensive rebound, kick it out, and Hornacek got it right back to him. Malone has 29. Three seconds to shoot. Harper's not the guy they want to have do it, but he has to. And he beats the shot clock. And Cam's a huge shot. Doug, I think Utah is letting Scotty Pippen rest. I'm going to go at him right now. He's trying to guard Antoine Carr. And Antoine Carr has a big advantage over him inside. Russell. Driving against Rodman. Contact and a foul. Kukoc was also there, and they call it on Kukoc's third. Now you watch Harper as he takes this shot. Does he get it off in time? Mm, I don't know. That's a tough call. Well, you know what? Look. If they miss that call, it's a five-point swing in missed calls on shot clock situations. They took a Howard Isley three away wrongly in the first half. This one was even closer, but it appeared that Harper may have been just a fraction of a second behind the shot clock. Harper's basket counted. This one by Isley, which should have counted, did not. See, I think this three was good in the last shot that Harper took. I think that was a shot clock violation. Russell steps to the line and knocks them both down. in on Harper, out to MJ for three. It's short. Hornacek pegging it ahead to Russell, but Michael, with whatever gas is left in his tank, gets back to pick it off. Rodman, offensive foul on Dennis. And that's five. Now, Isaiah, that's what you're talking about. Jumping out off that screen and make Michael Jordan be a passer. Throw it to Rodman, who can't finish. And you saw Jordan right there complaining, saying Rodman needs, needs, to have he needs to have a chance to come down. I thought it was a questionable call. When you look at this play, you watch Jordan come off the screen, and he's double-teamed, and as an offensive player, you're allowed to establish position and come down. It's a tough call right there. Oh no, says Michael. The Jazz by a basket. Well, remember last year in game four, Stockton to Malone that won the game. 
The long pass over the fingertips of Michael Jordan. Stockton with a great pass. Michael just misses it, and Malone gets the layup really to seal the win. Well, moments ago, we're we going to see the same thing here. A chance to go up four. Hornacek throws the pass, and Michael Jordan, with every ounce of energy that he has, goes up and gets the skill. He misses the shot, the three that would have put him up one. Had this gone through, it would have been a four-point lead for the Jazz. Michael gets back and makes the great steal. Jordan has 37 points on 13 of 32. Two of seven in the fourth. He is three of 14 in his last two fourth quarters. Even Superman apparently gets tired. Malone, lots of room. Got it. That's their pet play. Malone goes over like he's going to the post and screams for Stockton, and he rolls out and hits the huge jump shot. Jordan spinning. Double team. Has to get rid of it. Gets it right back from Pippen. Double pump, knocked away by Carr, and a foul. Isaiah, normally on this play, Malone goes to the post. This time he goes in screen, so Stockton can get to the middle of the floor. A mix-up, they trap, no one rotates, and Malone buries the shot. Now, on this defensive possession, Hornacek, I thought, should have run at Michael Jordan and made him pass the ball back to Scottie Pippen. You got to take the ball out of Jordan's hands right now and make Harper or Pippen beat you from the perimeter. Jordan's 9 of 12 now at the strike. Now you look at the job that Russell is doing against Jordan. He's keeping him out on the perimeter, not allowing him to come into the post. He hits them both, making it a two-point game with exactly two minutes to play. Stockton. Russell with a huge rebound. Tried to throw it off Rodman's leg as he was walking a tightrope and couldn't do it. Chicago back looking to tie. Michael. Short. Rebound Stockton. The jumpers come up short when fatigue is a factor. It's true of anyone, even the best of them. Rodman got in front and knocked it loose, but Chicago touched it last. Phil Jackson hot over that call. A minute 14 remaining. Watch Hornacek on this play, wrapping off a triple screen. Stockton for three! That would have been a dagger in Chicago's heart. Instead, they could tie it or take the lead with a three of their own. Jordan. And a blocking foul. Stockton is down on the floor. Jordan's going to come to the line at Stockton's fourth. You watch, you watch Jordan fake like he's coming to the middle again. Russell gives him the baseline. Stockton comes over a little too late. Call the blocking foul on Stockton. Jordan again at the free throw line. 20 seconds on 20 second timeout. Chicago takes a 20 second timeout. Now you watch Jordan in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the basket against Anderson. Pulls up and takes the jump shot. Again, they're keeping him out on the perimeter, not allowing him to get into the post. Coming to the foul line for his patented free throw line, Jay. But again, Russell keeping him out of the post. Pulls up, shoots it a little short. This is a big 20 second timeout for Chicago because it allows Jordan to get some rest before he goes to the free throw line to try to knock down two. At the line, he's 10 of 13. From the floor, 
He's 13 of 33. Well, in this fourth quarter, Michael is only two of eight from the fourth quarter, but what he's done is he's been able to get to the free throw line. He's six of six, so he's shooting his seventh and eighth free throws of the quarter. They've got to find a way to be able to guard him without fouling him here. He cuts it to one. Phil Jackson has told the Bulls during the last couple of timeouts, let's try to take it to the rack, go to the basket, not look for the perimeter shot. Jordan ties it. Maybe the 22nd timeout was, as much as anything, just to give him a breather to gather himself for the crucial free throws. 50 seconds. Malone. Cross court Stockton, a three, it's there! Now Ron Harper is guarding Stockton who cuts through. Pippen is gonna double team. So what's what happens now? Stockton's gonna circle through and Antoine Carr dives down so Harper has to play him. Now on the skip out pass, Stockton hits the three. What a huge shot to put his, to put his team up three. Look, look how close his foot was to the line here. A three by inches. Now this is what Carl Malone has to do. He has to find the open man and Harper runs at him. And normally, it's Stockton and Malone. This time, it was Malone to Stockton. Ten points for Stockton. At age 36, he's played more NBA playoff games than anyone in history without winning a title. Now, the Bulls would like to get two-for-one possession here. Try to get a quick score, get to the free throw line to give them two opportunities to one. Pippen into Jordan. Michael working on Russell. Brings them to within one. They scored within four seconds there. That's how quickly that changes now. Now it puts the pressure on the Jazz to score once again. Jordan with 43. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead. Timeout Utah, 5.2 seconds left. Michael Jordan running on fumes with 45 points. At the end of the game, you gotta get it out of his hands. He's beat you so many times. You watch Jordan play, Doug, and you know that at the end of the game, he's a killer. This was really the play that hurt Isaiah because they scored so quickly. Michael got in there and scored within four seconds. And what, and what happened was Michael doubled back. You're going to see he's in the play. Look where Hornacek is setting the screen. Michael never clears, so Malone doesn't see him. He comes from the blind side and strips him. So three crucial plays here by Michael Jordan now as he gets Brian Russell with a quick crossover. Look at Brian Russell slips, and Michael pulls up and buries the shot to give him a one-point lead. That may have been, who knows what will unfold in the next several months, but that may have been the last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. Watch Jordan's left hand here as he gives Russell the push. The referee can't see that. Jordan frees himself up for a clean look. The greatest thing about Jordan is he has all the tricks. That's why it's so difficult to guard him. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? I don't think you can put it into words, Bob. I mean, what he's done here in this fourth period, you see the 16 points. He got about a minute's rest and had to come back in. And Scotty Pippen has played a gutty, gutty game today, but still plenty of time here for Utah to try to score. But that's what Jordan is so smart at with his brains. He rested on defense so he would have enough energy down the stretch to perform. 
All right, 5.2 seconds. Utah down one. Coach? Well, you've got, to, you've got to do one of two things. You've either, either got to get the ball to a guy where he can attack the basket. Utah loves to run a play up at the top where they wrap a guy to the corner and then pin down and catch at the top. You know if Malone gets it, they're probably going to run at him. Stockton and Hornacek have made key shots their entire career. Stockton, Hornacek, Antoine Carr, Carl Malone, and Brian Russell. If they score, there's a game seven. If they don't, for the second straight year, they go out in six. Stockton, Harper's on him, behind the screen. Harper got a piece of it, it comes off. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship, and it's their second three-peat. When you lose by this narrow margin, speaking of the Utah Jazz, there are so many things to look back on. But the Howard Isley three that was taken away in the first half will eat at them all summer long. Jackson and Jordan, perhaps for the last time. Chicago 87, Utah 86. Jerry Sloan showing class, trying to shake hands with each and every member of the Chicago Bulls who won two out of three here and two out of three in Chicago. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Statistically, especially in terms of shooting percentage, Michael Jordan has had better games. But when you consider at age 35, the games he's played this year, the grinding minutes he's played, and Scottie Pippen being all but incapacitated tonight, and the fact that they're on the road, and the fact that the odds would shift to Utah's favor for a game seven. Yes, MJ Rose again. He no longer needs accomplishments to prove his case as the greatest player in NBA history. He just adds to it. And if this is the final chapter, what a way to close the book. I tell you, Bob, as you look at Scotty Pippen there, I remember all Scotty ever heard about was the migraine headache and that he couldn't play with pain. Well, today, they could not have won this game without him. Just his presence being out there. He made some big shots. He fed the post. He did all the little things for Chicago, and his numbers aren't going to show it. But Michael, once again, with the heroics, the unbelievable plays. But his sidekick, Scottie Pippen, was there for him when he needed him. And I'm watching Michael Jordan hug his mother right there. Such a great player, such a great person. Everything that this game is about, the goodness of it, he represents, and what he's done for the game of basketball and for this Chicago Bulls organization. All of us as former athletes are very thankful to 23 in red. Michael Jordan is as great a competitor as sports has ever seen. He also has an uncanny sense of theater. And as he makes his decision, he'll think about the fact that he could not ask for a better punctuation than this. He accepts a victory cigar from Jerry Reinsdorf to not only hit the winning basket, but have it be the last shot he takes this season, maybe the last he'll ever take in a Chicago Bulls uniform to win the game and the championship by a point. You know, Bob, it's interesting about Michael Jordan. He's a guy who has nothing to prove, but lives his life every day as, he, as if he has everything to prove. That's something about his greatness. He's, he's an unbelievable athlete. One more look at a shot you'll be seeing hundreds of times if you're a basketball fan. You'll see it dozens of times on the highlight shows tonight. Stockton gets rid of it. It's short. 
Harper had a hand in his face and maybe even got a small piece of the ball. I, I thought Stockton had a great look right there. It was a well-executed play. Stockton and Malone. And that's who you want taking your last shot because he's made so many big shots for Utah. You know, my heart goes out to Stockton and Malone because those two, more than any other two athletes in this era, really deserve a shot at wearing a championship ring. A shot can hardly come much closer than that without going in. For the celebration, here's Dan Roberts, the PA man. And now, please direct your attention to set court for the presentation of the 1998 NBA Finals MVP and the Larry O'Brien Championship Trophy. It is now time to make the 1998 Championship Trophy presentation. Joining me up here are the Chairman Jerry Reinsdorf, Vice President Jerry Krause, Head Coach Phil Jackson, and to make that presentation, here's the Commissioner of the NBA, Mr. David Stern. The two best teams in the NBA this season were the Utah Jazz and the Chicago Bulls. These two teams in these finals wonderfully matched and motivated treated the world of basketball to NBA basketball at its heart-stopping best. To both teams, thank you, but to the Chicago Bulls, the 1998 NBA champion, and a team for the ages, congratulations to this team, to this organization, to its fans, and to these great players. All right, Mr. Reinsdorf, Chicago Bulls fans all over the world would like to know, are you going to do everything you can possible to bring these guys back here to try to do this all over again? Well, let me first of all say that on behalf of millions of Bulls fans all around the world, it's an honor to accept this trophy. It's only unfortunate that we can't have co-champions because this Utah Jazz team it's just the greatest team that we've ever played. Two years in a row, they took us as far as you could, ta you could take anybody. Winning six, in a r six championships in eight years is unbelievable. It's a tribute to a great coach and his staff, great players, Scotty and Michael, an unbelievable performance by Scotty and Payne tonight, Jerry Krause and his staff, just unbelievable. And on behalf of millions of Bulls fans all over the world, I can only hope and pray that Michael and Scotty will come back and defend the championship one more time. I take that as a yes. You are going to try to bring them back. Jerry Krause, you have to be very proud of this team. I'm so proud of these players and the staff. And this is for the fans back in Chicago, the greatest sports fans in the world. And we're just so happy. We want to celebrate. Celebrate safe, guys, and we'll be home tomorrow morning. All right, Jerry, let me ask you. You do everything you can to bring these guys back. Well, you know, tonight all I want to do is celebrate and have fun, and we're going to, we're going to talk uh, later on. But this is a great occasion. And what Jerry said about the Utah Club, Jerry Sloan and, and, uh, and Scotty Layden are special people, and, and this is just a great organization, and, and it's somebody you, uh, that you're proud of that you can be with. All right, Jerry, let's, let's talk to Phil Jackson. Once yes, again, I'm on. <laughs> once again, another journey to the top of the mountain. How is this one different from the other five? Well, Ahmad, we had to fight our way through this one. This is a, a real struggle for us this year against overwhelming odds. Maybe not as talented as the last two years, but they had a great heart. Hearts of a champion, as Michael has said, and they won it. All right, you will celebrate tonight. Are you going to come back? Are you Gee, gonna... that's a great question, Ahmad. I'll dodge that one right now. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Phil. All right, once again, it is now time for the 1998 NBA Finals Most Valuable Player Award. And once again, here's the Commissioner David Stern. Big surprise. Six championships, six MVPs. Michael Jordan, get over here. You grace us with your presence. You've contributed mightily to our league. And tonight you gave one of the singular performances in the history of the NBA Finals. Thank you and congratulations, 1998 NBA Finals MVP, Michael Jordan. Michael, you have won this award before, but somehow 
I have the feeling that this one is more special than all of them. Well, let me say hello to my wife and my kids at home because they desperately wanted to come. I didn't want them to come here today because I wanted to focus on the game, but I wish they were here to help me celebrate. I know they're there cheering and I can't wait to get home, but to the Utah fans, you guys are a tough bunch to play in front of. You guys came out with a lot of loyalty and respect for your team. You made it really tough for us. Uh, we really, after losing game five in Chicago, a couple of us dread coming back to Utah because we had to deal with the fans because of the energy that they bring to the game. But we had no choice, so we had to come in and play our best, and you guys made it a very competitive finals, and you know it's very worthy to win this. And I, I think of all the championships that we won, this is the toughest. It doesn't get any easier, but at the beginning of the season, this was the goal that you set out for. How wonderful was it to make this into a reality? Well, I tell you, when you start the season, I'm pretty sure every team next year is going to start with the focus of finishing and winning their last game. We started with that focus. It was a long road, a lot of different tasks and little bumps in the road, but somehow we made it. And I think everybody who looks at this year is going to have some lot of, a lot of gratification and understanding and a lot of dedication. There were a lot of times during the course of the season that people doubted the Chicago Bulls, doubted that you'd be able to come back and pull this off. Even during this, uh, this finals series here, people doubted you. How did you guys stay so confident? Well, I mean, this team is, is, is one. Our leadership is strong. Our leadership is, is very positive, very determined, and it filters down to the rest of the players. And we never let anybody gave, give up. You know, we, we believed in it, and, and we kept coming for it. All right, I've asked everybody if they're all going to come around to try to do this again one more time. I would love for that to happen. I think that's something that's going to have to be determined over the summer. All right. Congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Chicago Bulls. Let's go over to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much, Ahmad. Tonight, one of the truly gutty performances in the finals by Scotty Pippen. Scotty, how badly were you hurt? during this game? I was hurting pretty bad, you know, to start the game off. I was able to get a dunk when I came down. The pain just sort of built from that point, and every time I tried to run, I was getting spasms, but I knew I wanted to come back and try to give a better performance in the second half, so I just tried to take advantage of that little bit of time before the half and, you know, see what I can do. And I came out the second half, and Chip wanted to give me a little treatment, and I took the treatment, and I told him from there I was going to just try to gut it out. You know, I felt like that my presence out on the floor would mean more than just sitting in the locker room. Initially, you didn't think you could come back, and then the miracle happened there at halftime. How much did you revert back to some of the things that had happened to you in the past, and you knew that if you gutted it out this time that it could change all of that? Well, I, I knew I was going to come back the second half. I have to correct you on that. I knew, but I just didn't know how much I was going to be able to gill. I knew I wanted to just hope that the team could stay in the game, keep it close, and if I could come back out, let my presence be known out on the court. Now, Scotty, you were in tears after the game. Was this your most difficult championship, and why the tears this time? Is it maybe because you feel it's ending? Well, I think they all have brought tears to my eyes, but this was so difficult because, you know, I felt like to some degree without me being out on the court that I was kind of letting the team down, and they understood, but, you know, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be a present. I wanted to play a major role in the game, but the other guys came off the bench, held us in there the first, first half, especially Michael. He had a heck of a game, and, you know, everything else is history. Now, you hold the key here to these teams returning. Michael said if you come back, he'll come back and fill and so forth. What are your thoughts? Will you come back? Would you take a one-year deal? What will go through your thought process in making this determination? Well, Jim, right, right now, I just have to, you know, let everything soak, soak in. You know, there's a lot of opportunities out there for me, and, you know, I have to look more down the road in my future, but, you know, I don't know. You know, after all this soaks in and get back and get my back back on track uh you know you never know is there a twins of sadness with you a little melancholy feeling right now that it may be ending excuse me are you feeling a little sad right now that this could be coming to a close no not not really you know we're gonna enjoy this and you know as long as we we, we can you know uh as a player right now i don't feel like it's over you know we got a lot of celebration to do and i'm not really looking forward to next season right now final thought the utah jazz and carl malone a spectacular effort what would your thoughts be toward them that was great. You know, Carl and uh, John, you know, there are some gutty performers. Uh, what well, is Horny Sack, Russell, who's grown and matured and, you know, had a fabulous series. Uh, you know, we take our hats off to this team. The fans here have really came out and made us work hard. Uh, you know, it was, it was a great series. You know, it was an even better series than last series. Even though, it, you know, both series in at six games, uh, this, this, this topped it off.